For the past few years, a common question posed to me is if I believe our country and our civilization will survive. And my answer has always been, sure. I've lived through moments in history when it appeared that all was so far gone, but we've recovered. And I've cited the assassinations of JFK and RFK and Dr. Martin Luther King, the violent race riots of the early and mid 60s, and the anti-war protests, the mayhem on college campuses in the late 60s and early 70s, all of which I lived through. I remember the sexual liberation craze of the 60s and 70s, where commitment and marriage were scoffed at in favor of open sexual promiscuity brought on in part by easy access to birth control pills and abortion. I watched our cities burn down in riots and lootings. Yeah, I remember the 1968 Democrat convention in Chicago when police and protesters violently clashed. And then there was the May 1970 Kent State killing of four students, nine others wounded by National Guard troops who opened live fire on campus protesters. I witnessed the scandal and ultimate resignation of a president, the Iranian takeover of an embassy and the taking of 52 American hostages held for 444 days by radical Muslims. I've seen oil embargoes. You remember those? They caused long lines at gas stations. I remember seeing interest rates for home mortgages climb to 17 and 18 percent, causing economic upheaval. There have been drug use crises that made it appear that an entire generation would drop out and get doped up. But through it all, there were glimpses of hope, and we experienced an ebb and flow of history that fluctuated between the worst and the best. We saw the Civil Rights Act passed and a landing on the moon, major medical breakthroughs that saved lives, sometimes of our loved ones, and innovations in technology that brought us things like personal computers and ultimately smartphones and access to the worldwide communication through something called the World Wide Web, commonly known as the internet, or as George W. Bush used to call it, the interweb. <laughs> but when people ask me now if we're gonna be okay, I say soberly, but honestly, I don't know. And the reason is that there is such a sign of incredible depravity that is not only occurring, but it's being approved by those who are well-educated and ought to know better. A new Harvard-Harris poll found that among 18 to 24-year-old Americans, a majority, 51%, think that Hamas's slaughter of 1,300 innocent Israeli civilians was justified. Overall, Americans disagree, 76 to 24%. And those of us over 65, well, we disagree, 91 to 9%. Which means that while people in my generation are overwhelmingly appalled by the massacre of children, the violent rape of women, and the torturing of elderly, younger Americans actually consider such behavior justified. And worse, much of that attitude prevails on the campuses of what once were the elite institutions of higher education. Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Columbia, how is it that in places where we ought to find the smartest people, we are instead seeing the most immoral, least aware, spiritually blind, and intellectually ignorant people? I mean, we've got people appointed to the Supreme Court who can't answer the simple question, what is a woman? It's our simple fear that it might offend those who argue that gender is no longer a scientific or biological reality. It's just whatever we imagine it to be based on nothing more than a whim. There are people in our culture that actually advocate for the chemical castration and surgical mutilation of children who are about as prepared to make such life-altering permanent decisions as they are to be handed a loaded firearm or let them be given the choice of eating vegetables or ice cream for dinner. But the reason for which I lose my optimism most is that in the past, there was a remnant of sane and moral people who never wavered from believing and advocating for biblical truth and the Judeo-Christian norms of simply treating others as one desired to be treated and believing there was a God, that he was involved in our world and we should follow his laws. I now see many younger but very popular pastors 
who have moral confusion and in an attempt to be relevant and loved are actually embracing sexual immorality as just a personal choice and who in the name of love have dismissed sin as anything other than just a lifestyle choice. If this trend continues, I can't imagine the patience of God lasting indefinitely. And there may soon come the time when he either lets us collapse into oblivion or he finally says, that's it. It's time for putting this evil generation to rest and maybe just call a halt to people who have destroyed themselves by rebellion. I got to tell you, I hope I'm wrong. I pray for reformation, but I fear for the apocalypse. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider clicking the subscribe button below and the notification bell next to it so you don't miss any of our future videos when they go up online.